take the state property. This is Teddy DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. Hey, this is Bob Baffling. Hey, everyone, this is Rick Stanley. This is the Honky Dog Man, the greatest WWE Intercontinental Champion of all time. This is your wrestling show, Ottawa. Heck, they could use you guys over in WWE. You're listening to the greatest wrestling show in the whole wide world. This is Wrestling With Ideas. Welcome back inside the CKDJ studios right here for another edition of Wrestling With Ideas. As always, I am the music man alongside me, man with no excuses, Jonathan Skews. Oh, wrestling with ideas! Don't you dare be sour! Clap for your two, three-week co-host and feel the power! Right, so before... We talk about what's been going on in wrestling this week. You are going to be taking on more of a role as sort of a regular, semi-regular. Yeah, yeah. And it seems uh, work's cool with me being on air. And they say that uh, they're proud of me and that I get to keep doing this cool radio thing for as long as it fits in the work schedule. So it looks like uh, guaranteed next week and maybe the 15th. Awesome. That's, a, that's almost sort of the way that I started out is like whenever work would let me do it. But then as my role on the show was beginning to increase, um, I had asked for Wednesdays off completely. And luckily enough, they were good to be able to let me do that. So I, I don't know if I'm going to be that lucky, but I know I definitely squeeze a half day. Yeah. Well. Especially now that I'm starting at 6 a.m. again. Mm, it right. feels good to be back. Now that you got two legs again. Yeah. But uh, we do, as you may have noticed, we played um, an interest. We played a, a national anthem of the Soviet Union sung by Nikolai Volkov. We begin this week with uh, some sad news that you probably have heard if you're a wrestling fan by now. There was a slew of deaths of passing away that happened on Sunday. All of them, all three of them happened on Sunday. Well, there were four, actually. There was there was Nikolai Volkov, Brian Lawler. We'll talk about all these a little bit after. Uh, Nikolai Volkov, Brian Lawler, Brickhouse Brown, and then Trevor Lee's father, who actually co-founded Omega Wrestling with Matt Hardy back in 1994, uh, Trevor, see, uh, I, I did not Tracy Cadell. I did yeah. not hear that. I did not know that he had yeah. also passed away. He had also passed away as well. Now, Nikolai Volkov is, well, Nikolai Volkov and Brian Christopher are probably the two most notable, not probably, they are the two most notable names on this list here. Nikolai Volkov, of course, you might have heard Howard Finkel introduce the Iron Sheik. Most of Nikolai Volkov's later in-ring work in the WWF was as a tag team with the Iron Sheik. Managed by uh, classy Freddie Blassie there. You know, he was uh, it was a great uh, of the beginning stooges to Hulkamania, right? With uh, him and Iron Sheik and their anti-America gimmick, it was a it was a great stooge for Hulk Hogan. But he was also it really he had his talent and well he he could sing, he could wrestle with the best of them. He wrestled well until he died, I believe. That, right. Uh, 
previously mentioned that uh, I think it was Marco was here. We it were, was Marco. It was Marco and Zach that were actually on the call there. Marco and Gibby were on the call for that match when he was in uh, Great North Wrestling. Exactly. So uh, there's a little wrestling with ideas connection to Nikolai Volkov. Right. And yep. it, it is very sad to see one of the legends go, but it was yeah. his, his time was ticking, and I don't know if he was suffering, but he's in a better place now. Right. Now, moving on to the second most notable death here. You got Brian Lawler. Now, there is there is a story here, actually. Uh, Brian Lawler had, has had a history most of his adult life as being... He was... He was it's kind of an X-Pac story. Almost. But... In this case, it didn't turn out. The it way. didn't end the same way it as didn't Xbox end the same way as X, or because Xbox hasn't. Ended I'm not going to call it an Xbox story anymore. I'm going to call it a pre DDP yoga story, where you, we have a wrestler who's dealing yeah. with alcohol and substance abuse and is in a very right. dark place. And Brian Christopher had been arrested for a DUI prior to his death, and it just went all downhill from there. Right. So that being, he was found hanged in his cell and at the he, jail. And they could not bring him back. Right. Now, um, it was said also, I feel, ba- I feel really bad for Jerry Law. I feel, I, I feel the worst it was, for Jerry Because he right had now. said that he wasn't about to bail yeah, he his had, son out again, that he wanted to learn. He exactly. Wanted to learn and lesson. Jerry Lawler had, he's a loving father, as you can tell. He'd bailed his son out before time, time and time again. And he said, Brian, I'm not doing it this time. You're 46 years old. You need to learn. And it's just sad what happened. Right. Now, of course, Brickhouse Brown, another name on this list. Just a little bit of backstory before we get into what happened this week, as there is a lot. Oh, yes. There's definitely a lot to talk about this week. Um, Brickhouse Brown was, I believe it was uh, Memphis? No. No, it was Mid-South. Thank you. Because we had talked about this, and I had gotten this wrong when we were It was Mid-South Wrestling. It was Mid-South Wrestling. Um, When Ernie Watts, or Bill Watts, one of the Watts was, um, he had had Junkyard Dog as the African American wrestler, as the main African American wrestler, on his um, on his promotion, roster, on his promotion, and um, he had left to go to the WWF. Now, Brickhouse Brown was one of the wrestlers. They brought in like three or four different guys. Yeah, he, it wasn't it wasn't so much of a, a bootleg of Junkyard Dog as it was a. S- I can't say spin off because that is a bootleg, but it, yeah. it it was something that would make you think of Junkyard Dog, but, but also in the sense that, hey, this guy's like as good as Junkyard Dog. Right, but when you really think about it though, Junkyard Dog was big. Brickhouse Brown was five eight and he couldn't have weighed more than like two hundred and twenty pounds. No, no, he could he wasn't as big, that's for certain, but he had that uh a certain charisma, I believe. I haven't seen too many of his right. th- of his matches, but he had a, a certain matching charisma to uh, Junkyard Dog, in my opinion. Right. Now, as we mentioned, of course, we all wish, we wish that they all rest in peace. But there is a lot to talk about this week, John. Oh, my goodness. So let's kick things off here with Monday Night Raw. Now, of course, this was being hyped up as the return show for both Brock Lesnar and a returning from suspension, Ronda Rousey. Yeah, yeah, we got we got both of the X slash current UFC stars of WWE. Well, I mean, in uh, Ronda Rousey and Brock Lesnar. Well, there's a third one. That's oh, in the NXT right now. Yes, yes, of course, Shayna Baszler. But we're talking. Oh, oh, are we talking about that guy right now? That guy? That guy who went 4-0 and in UFC and is my favorite now not indie wrestler of all time. A Are man who kind of hangs out with Rob Van Dam, if you know what I mean. Does he do the weed? He does the weed. Are you talking about Matt Riddle? Sure. I mean, not really, but we can talk about Matt Riddle. We better talk about him later because I could talk about him all day. Right. Now, I'm just going back into our notes here trying to find... Which uh, which video, which clip from Raw? Yeah, I, w- I was thinking about pulling up a clip. They, they were both the same. That was Brock Lesnar was backstage at Raw, not coming out, stating that he doesn't watch the program, doesn't watch the show, he, mm-hmm. he doesn't care, and he was backstage reading a magazine, and right. he was giving some demands to Paul Heyman, and he broke Paul Heyman's cell phone, 
And that was the clip that I was thinking of. But there's also another clip that happened at the end of Raw, which was a little bit more exciting, which we may decide to play. But I'm going to tell you something about Brock Lesnar right now. I think he's on his way out. He's the universal champion. He doesn't show up to work. The crowd knows it. He knows it. Vince McMahon knows it. Triple H knows it. Everybody and their mother who watches wrestling knows that Brock Lesnar is the universal champion. He doesn't show up to work. And they're irritated and angry. And he's got a match against Roman Reigns at SummerSlam. And I think this is the final. This is Brock Lesnar t- be. tipping his hat for until next time he comes back. Please, I don't want him to come back. He, he will come back, whether it's for a Hall of Fame or another title run. Yeah. I can't tell you right away. Right. Now, were you talking uh, one of the matches, uh, one of the clips of him refusing to come out? Yes. Was that one of them? All right. Yes. Well, I, I have happened to find this. So I'll link all of them in the description. As I say, I have never done, I have never actually linked anything in the description. But as I am trying to revitalize myself on this show, as I'm trying to, uh, I've been going through a lot of personal stuff in the past couple weeks. But don't worry. It's going to be fixed. It's going to be better than ever. It's coming back. We're moving to a new host. We're, we're moving to a new, ho- a new hosting system. A new audio ago. host, not a new host host. Like yeah. a file host. Not that a person is, host. That is very true. Yes. Yes. Anyways, so, so yeah, when you hear this, this is going to be on Anchor and not Podbean, but that's not important because we want to see what Brock Lesnar has to say. I said a lot of different things. This, of course, about Bobby Lashley, isn't but after Brock going to war with him a couple times, I can honestly his say opponent at SummerSlam, I a number one Bobby contender, Lashley. so to speak, for the WWE Universal Championship. This is the voice of Roman Reigns. And that's a lot more than I can say for Brock Lesnar because I have absolutely zero respect for that fool. Neither neither do I as of this writing. Brock Lesnar? No. Not for Brock Lesnar. Well, or for Roman, but Roman you could get respect easily. I haven't had respect for Roman Reigns in the past like three years. Oh, I don't have respect for Roman, but he could get my respect. He could get it, but he'd have to do some stuff. Yeah. He has plenty of time to walk up in that octagon. But as he does talk about, face and run he does mouth. show up to Raw ready to work. Roman well, Reigns is yeah, here yeah. tonight. Not Bro- unlike thing, the champ Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns shows Brock up every night ready to go. Come up in my yard, get up in my face, and run his mouth up in here. This was a botched entrance by so bad. He stands there standing for five seconds just staring at the entrance Ladies ramp. And and gentlemen. then he turned around way too soon. Yeah, he... It's almost as if he knew what was going to happen, Colin. What? For, forgive me, Mr. Reigns. My, my, my client has authorized me to offer you his most profound congratulations for your victory last week over Bobby Lashley. Yeah, because he knew if he was facing Bobby Lashley, you, Bobby Lashley would destroy him. Opportunity Not necessarily destroy him, but it would definitely be a closer match. Slam, but yeah. you can mark my words, Roman Reigns. You know that, despite the fact this that Roman is Reigns is probably going to win this match anyways. This uh, it's entirely possible. Spoiler. I would hope because Summer here's Paul Heyman's spoiler. Brock Lesnar is going to put down the big dog and go on to UFC and become a two-sport champion. Whoever was preparing this stuff was uh, definitely trying to hit the ball hard when they were saying that Brock Lesnar could be a two-sport champion. I don't know what that means for SummerSlam, if they're actually going to go through with Brock having two companies' belts. I hope to my client I really hope, but I, I think this is Brock Lesnar's last one right for some time. American Airlines Arena in Miami, Florida. And he is sitting in Sign the in the crowd that says, eat, sleep, no show, repeat. Room, and yeah. he will come out here when he feels like it. And only when he feels like it. And he's not coming out here. I'm not done yet. And if, only if, he feels like coming out. But Roman Reigns, don't worry, because at SummerSlam, Brock Lesnar will, will do 
But what? What's he gonna do? Is he gonna actually show up to SummerSlam? Ooh, Roman with the hot burn. As a matter of burn. fact, if he actually shows up, I want you to remember this. Go and write burn, this really? down. If he didn't Rock say suffer and suck attached, so it's a step forward for the guy. I'm going to send him back to the UFC. Send him back to the UFC. Why doesn't Roman Reigns go to the UFC to fight Brock? he's not going back as the beast. Please, no. He's going back Are you telling me that you would Roman be upset Reigns if Roman Reigns left WWE? You, the biggest anti-Roman guy I know. to see another match with Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns again after SummerSlam. Even if it was in UFC. I couldn't care less if it was in freaking oh man. Even if it was in a soccer club, you wouldn't you wouldn't want to see it. You wouldn't want anything to do with it. They could you, even if it was a football match of them playing in like the arena parking lot, you wouldn't want to see it. No. Interesting take from Colin Scully on Roman Reigns. Well, I mean I just, I mean, I guess what I'm, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. What you're trying to say is you don't like Roman and you don't want to see him ever again, but it's undoubtedly not, the truth is we'll see him next week, it's, the week it's after great, that. It's great, it's great heel work, even though he's not really the heel in this situation. Yes, yes. Brock Lesnar is the heel, Roman's the face, but Roman knows that he's not getting over as a face, so he has to lean into the gray area if he's going to get a reaction out of the crowd. Right. Now, does he go heel after this, after he wins the belt? No. No? No. Do you think he gains the fans' respect after winning the belt? No. He's just going to have the belt. I think Roman is going to be much like his first title reign, and he's going to be a transitional champion. Who do you say takes it off him? Braun. Money in the bank. Right. Okay, I shouldn't say Braun. I should say because Kevin Owens does have a match, and if Braun Strowman loses in any way at SummerSlam, then Kevin Owens is the money in the bank briefcase holder. But I'm saying whoever holds money in the bank on Raw right now is going to be... I don't know if Roman's going to win it first, but they're the next champ. Right. How long does it take for them to cash? Uh, Five minutes and 15 seconds. All right. Because <laughs> Seamus515 says, I just broke kicked your arse. Oh, man. Interesting. Very interesting. Do you not remember the, the first Roman title run that lasted five minutes and 15 seconds? Oh, that's right. Because yeah. he won Survivor Series, and then Sheamus cashed in yeah, with the help of Triple H. Right. So I'm thinking, I'm not saying, it, I just said 515 because that was the last time somebody cashed in on Roman. Right. Well, it's the only time that someone's ever cashed in on Roman. No, Seth Seth did. Oh, uh, well, I mean. was Ro- Roman's was Ro- been in the main event of was WrestleMania. Roman, was Roman the champion? No, he was in a championship match. Right. And he Roman ate the pin. Nah, I guess. All right. First matchup. First actual wrestling match, as this is a wrestling show. Yes. First uh, match on Finn Raw. Finn Balor versus Stephanie McMahon's personally appointed, appointed constable of Monday Night Raw. Not personally appointed Mahal Monitor. No. Now, you might want to explain the whole Mahal Monitor thing. So, I had read, I'm pretty sure it was a joke and was not serious at all, that when WWE first went to sign, now this is a tweet from some guy who probably doesn't have an account anymore, said that when originally bringing Jinder Mahal into the WWE, there was an angle for Mahal to have a gimmick called the Mahal Monitor, and he would patrol the halls of the WWE backstage and probably doing stuff to instigate him into matches or to get Sunil Singh's ass kicked. Right. But How many food fights do you think would happen at this point? Too many, because if where there's a hall monitor, there's a food fight. Do you think like a boat, like a B team barbecue? Exactly, and we've seen it countless times. Right, and no. it wouldn't stop. Now this match was actually, this yes, match was, this match was good. This right. Balor Corbin match was better than the last Balor Corbin match. Right. How many more Balor, Cor- Balor Corbin matches do you think we're going to see here? I don't know. It's it's a reoccurring trend with Balor. I thought one Balor Ziggler match when ba- uh, Baron first came up to the main roster right. was enough, but we right. had about five. So who knows with how uh, Baron Corbin or Constable Corbin, as his new name is, that'll be a long name to put on a title belt if he ever won one. Stephanie McMahon's personally acqu- appointed Constable of Monday Night Raw, Baron Corbin. Now imagine putting that plate on the U.S. title or the IC title. They don't, no, they not, don't put nameplates on the U.S. They only put nameplates on the U.S. title. That's right. Do they? They do. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's the only one. 
And then they have the side plates. They have side plates. The uh, Universal yes. Championship and the uh, WWE Championship. And the women's belts. Right. And the tag belts as well. They don't put the names on them. No, no, they don't put side plates on them either. The tag belts are just the tag belts. Yeah. All right. I'm not going to get into my tag belt story cause, or my belt story. Cause belts on belts on belts. They have too many belts. Anyways, of course, the second return of the night featured a recently returning from suspension, Ronda Rousey. Now, she was in her corner. She was in the corner of Natalia against another return of Alicia Fox. Yes, I was surprised to see Alicia Fox is back, and she's got a similar gimmick to when she was the captain of the women's team at Survivor Series. But it's not exactly the same because she's not a captain, but she's still got that Looney Tunes attitude of hers. Right, that sort of unpredictable AJ sort of. Yes. Not she's AJ Styles. AJ, AJ Lee. Lee. Right, the Black Widow, as we would come to call but her. But in this match, we it was just, it was pretty much just a brawl because Rousey was there, and that's something I've noticed is that whenever Rousey's involved, she's never in the match. She's just there, and she usually instigates a brawl or gets goaded into a brawl. Alicia Fox beat Natalia. Right. And good for Alicia Fox. She's back. She's got one win since she's come back. Yeah. I'm interested to see what happens with Alicia. Definitely. Now, I believe there was a backstage thing that happened after this. Yeah. There was something that happened with someone going to complain. I think it was Alicia. Or no, that, I'm thinking SmackDown. Never mind. We'll talk about that later. Anyways, ne- next up on Raw, we have Elias. Finally getting his time on air to promote the new album. Yes. After, after being interrupted, like, what? Three times. Three, was it three? I thought it was four. It was once every hour. There were three hours of Raw. Fair point. If Raw goes to four hours... We're done. Yes. We are done. We are defective. We are, we are defecting to New Japan, and we're going to become a Puro cast. I'm defecting to the AWA, a brand that no longer exists. Oh, so you're defecting from wrestling completely. I'm go I'm going from the network to videotapes. Ah. <laughs> so we're going to become we're going to become specifically an old school review cast is what you're saying here. Well, I mean, I will be. <laughs> oh, so you, do you, do you want your own show? Is that why you asked if you could co-host here so you could get your own show out of this damn it? John. The whole reason I called on episode 100 was so that I could have my own show, Scully. I'm surprised it took you this long to see through it. God damn it. I <laughs> duped again. Anyways, Elias next segment with the Elias. Time on air. We have Bobby Lashley. We're hinting at an Elias-Bobby Lashley feud. It was sad because Elias is, as the heel, was trying to be nice to Bobby Lashley by letting him sing. And yeah. that was just the worst mistake and anybody... And of course, what was the, ch- what was the uh, tune that they decided? Oh, I couldn't remember. It's some Rockin' Robin. Some almost public domain song. Probably. And it probably is by now. It was butchered. Not by Elias' guitar playing, although he was doing a half-in-the-bag job. He wasn't doing the best that he could, which is because he's a heel. Yeah. And But worse than Elias' guitar playing was... Bobby Lashley's... What he would consider to be singing, which wasn't singing. It was just him being happy out loud. Right. (laughs) Probably singing for his sisters. Right. Now, on the next segment here, on the next match, rather, we've got... Braun Strowman versus Jinder Mahal. Now, here is something that I'm going to say. I am a huge Jinder Mahal fan. I'm a huge Braun Strowman fan. And I'm a giant Kevin Owens mark. Now, this match had everything for me. We had a Braun Strowman versus Jinder Mahal match where Jinder Mahal won because of something that Kevin Owens did. Right. And that thing is in the middle of this Braun Strowman is just laying into, decimating, destroying Jinder Mahal. Out of nowhere, with no entrance music, Kevin Owens strolls down and tries to walk off with Braun Strowman's Money in the Bank briefcase. No, no, Nobody knows why. But Braun Strowman kind of caught it in the corner of his eye, and Kevin Owens tried to run away with it. Braun caught him and took his briefcase back, and then chased Kevin Owens away so that Jinder Mahal, the modern-day Maharaja, would beat Braun Strowman by a countout. Right. Amazing. This was a good match, and unfortunately, we are out of time for the first segment here, so we are going to have to take a quick commercial break when we come back after 
releasing and gaining some chanty, we are going to be talking the second half of Monday Night Raw as well as, as Friday Night SmackDown. You are listening to Wrestling With Ideas right here on CKDJ 107.9. Welcome to the Dog Pound! Hey everyone, this is Rick Steiner. You're listening to Wrestling With Ideas. Welcome back inside the CKDJ Studios right here for Wrestling With Ideas on CKDJ 107.9. Ottawa's new music. I am the music man, Colin Scully. Alongside me, the man with no excuses, Jonathan Skews. Hey, Bonnie Bonnie and a hi-ho-ho, Apollo Crews and Titus Worldwide. In the next matchup on Raw that we're going to jump straight into because, oh, and we missed it. It was a Mitchable match. It was Apollo Crews versus Akam of the Authors of Pain. It, it was a match. It was a match. It was, was should have been. The, there was a match. Uh, there was a promo rather that the authors of pain cut before this match. Rather poorly. They, well, I mean, and then they were talking about how uh, I can't remember which one they said was from Punjab, India. They had later come on. To, they had later went on to say Michael Cole, I think it was, that one of them, the one that they said was from India, had won the Canadian national championships. Hmm. One of them is Canadian. That's just the Jinder Mahal thing, right there. Right. Are you saying what I think you're saying? That Jinder Mahal should, Mahal should align with the authors of pain and show them Shanti so they don't have to be so angry all the time? Exactly. Could you imagine what would have happened if Jinder Mahal aligned himself with Ryback? I can't imagine. Probably 4MB. Ryback is the fourth. Ryback is the fourth man. Hashtag Ryback fourth man. Please don't make that a thing. Do what you like, audience. If okay. you want, if you want us to do an all Ryback episode, please tweet at me at no excuse on Twitter. So you don't want to spend an entire month when we have content that we can use, okay? <laughs> there is a lot of stuff that we could use. It's only four episodes, John. Four or five episodes at the most here of the radio show talking about Vince Russo. Yes. So and you'd rather. So let me get this straight. You'd rather do an episode on Ryback than do four or five on Vince Russo. Well, yeah, I don't want to give Vince Russo that kind of attention. <laughs> also, getting under your skin is just something I've come to get used to, and I am the architect of it. Oh, speaking of the architect. <laughs> oh, man. Next match on the card, Seth Rollins, the architect who also burns it down. That's... So why would the architect build something only to burn it down? A little counterproductive, but we had Seth Rollins. Is this building to a future AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins feud? The house that AJ Styles built is the house that Rollins burnt down? But he was the architect, so he was the one that had the blueprints, and then he gave them, and then AJ Styles built it, but then Styles... Uh, but then Seth Rollins said, I don't like it, down. and he burnt it down, and yeah. Kane was in there, and he burned, and The Undertaker set the house on fire, too, and that's how the... Oh, it all wraps up into a nice little bundle. But what doesn't wrap up into a nice little bundle is Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre on Monday Night Raw. Rollins beat uh, McIntyre with via DQ, which is probably due to Mr. On the Outside IC title, Dolph Ziggler. I thought that they had split Dolph and uh, Drew for a No, second. it was just Drew claiming that he wanted a title too so he could be a part of that match that eventually led to Roman's being number one contender and now they're all buddy-buddy again. Oh, that's they great. never they never beat the crap out of each other, so they didn't uh, ever have that match. So they, yeah, they're still together. True. For how much longer though? Before Drew mm -hmm. says, "Screw it, you're screwing with, you're interfering uh, with my let's push." Let's see. We're at SummerSlam. It's uh, it's an IC title, so it's a B title. So it'll be on a B pay per view probably. So so whatever the hell they first do for one, September. Not the first one after SummerSlam, but yes, October. So Hell in a Cell probably. But no, but they've taken that off. It's going to be Starcade gonna be Starcade. Apparently. Maybe we'll get a Ziggler Ziggler McIntyre feud at Starcade. What year is this, pal? 2018. Yeah. 2018, I think. Starcade? Yeah. Starcade. Starcade in 2018. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> of course, the Starcade. They brought a it was a SmackDown house show actually. I think it was either last year or two years ago, back in twenty seventeen or twenty sixteen. Oh yeah, it was it was last year and they brought Goldust in on the card specifically. Why? Because he's Dusty Rhodes invented Starcade and Dustin Rhodes is his son and Cody's not in the WWE. 
then this is why you're here. I, I know these little tidbits of information that nobody else should know. Speaking of little tidbits of information, remember the revival? They're a thing? No. They're over. Like, actually went over in a match against the X tag team champions, the Deleters of World. And something I've noticed that I'm pretty not sure if you guys have noticed, but there's a little something peeking out of Bray Wyatt's ring gear. And I've seen a picture um, circulating the internet. It's not what you think it is, Colin. You can shut your mouth right now. It is that Bray Wyatt has a new chest tattoo. This man is wrestling with a fresh chest tattoo. Now, what is this fresh chest tattoo? I think it's a wolf, kind of like Baron Corbin's old logo. I don't know. Maybe Hart, uh, not Hardy. Maybe Wyatt's going to talk. Oh, oh, oh. Bray's turning on Matt Hardy because he got a wolf tattoo, which signifies a wolf in sheep's clothing. I'm calling it right now. Wolf in sheep's clothing. His tattoo is linked to this Matt Hardy feud. And they're going to... Oh, yes. Anyways, the Revival beat the Deleters of Worlds. It was a match. <laughs> That is, oh my God, that was amazing. It, it, this, that's what happens when I'm at home and things like that just hit me. And that's when you get those frantic texts out of nowhere. Yeah. Well, I mean, th that's what's going to happen. That, that could be. Well, we know that Bray Wyatt will eventually turn on Matt Hardy because they're not going to be a tag team together until 2030. Well, I mean, neither of them, well, Matt Hardy cer certainly shouldn't be wrestling by 2030. Exactly. So we know that they're going to split at some point, and then there you go. Bray Wyatt is the wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah. Anyways, you can't really, can you, can, you can't really do a segue into this one. Uh, let's see. Bray Wyatt, wolf, wolf, sheep, sheep, cute, cute, hugs, hugs, Bailey, Sasha Banks and Bailey versus the Riot Squad. Whip, 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 whip. <laughs> So yeah, we had so we had a women's tag team match with uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks against what's left of the Riot Squad. Ruby Riot is out with injury at the moment, so we're left with Liv Morgan and Sarah, Sarah Logan. Yeah. Uh, none of them are really cutting promos right now. They're just walking around backstage vandalizing things. So what do you think happens with the Riot Squad, who's without a leader, versus Sasha Banks and Bailey, who are two great women by themselves? You have Banks and Bailey beat them. Which is exactly what happened. Banks and Bailey win. Are they friends? Are they not? Tune in next week. Let's find out. Anyways, now this, this, this specifically will be a very interesting segue if you can, t if you can, if you can tie Sasa, ba Sasa Banks and Bailey versus the Riot Squad. This is, this is just too easy. This is, is just too easy. Sasha Banks is the boss. The boss of WWE is Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon's little B-I blank 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 is... Brock Lesnar, which is what Roman said. This is all according to Roman. So this segue is all according to Roman. We had a Brock Lesnar segment next where Raw GM Kurt Angle said, hey, Brock's here. Why isn't he in the ring? Very, oh, my God, man. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest with everybody here. At this point in the match, it was the third hour of Raw, and I had just fallen asleep. And the next morning, I had texted a friend of mine, to see if I could guess what happened in the last segment of Raw. And let's see what your prediction was. My prediction, I asked one question. Did Braun cash in? The answer was no. Braun did not cash in when Brock came out. So, Brock was goaded into coming out. He was mad. He gave Kurt Angle an F5. Right. And then, from something that they were slowly teasing in the backstage segments through the night... Brock Lesnar put his hands on Paul Heyman. What does this mean for Paul Heyman, Colin? This means that Paul Heyman is going to find somebody else. Like, it's going to... Brock Lesnar... Okay. At SummerSlam, right? Brock Lesnar is going to come out... With without, Paul. With. Without. Oh. Without, Brock Lesnar is coming out without Paul Heyman. And is there a stip for this match? The uh, What? The Lesnar versus Reigns. Yeah, it's for the title. It's just a plain match yeah, but for the title. It, yeah, but is the, there's no like extreme rules or anything? Oh, it's not a hell in a cell or anything like that. Okay. It's just a match. Okay, so here's what happens. You have Lesnar come out without Paul Heyman. You have Reigns come out, again, without anybody because he doesn't have anybody yet. Um, what, what's going to happen here? They're in there. It's going to be like a 20, 25-minute match. 
at some point, probably halfway through, Paul Heyman walks out, right? Then it looks like he's cheering on Brock. Then Roman has the ref distracted. Paul grabs the title because the title's placed on the steel steps. Almost as if something was meant to happen with the title. Paul Heyman sees it, remembers what happened on the Raw before, or the Raw a couple weeks ago, when Brock put his hands on Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman then takes the title and smashes Brock over the head with it, and then at which point, Reigns goes for the pin, and that's the finish. Reigns wins the Universal Championship. This see no, this match or this series or this feud or whatever has become a series of crappy finishes. So uh, I'm assuming they're gonna end it off uh, with another crappy finish. End it off with a crappy finish, but they don't make mistakes at SummerSlam like they do with WrestleMania, I've noticed. SummerSlam never ends on a big downer like Mania with Roman in the main event. A big downer like Mania, then explain what the hell happened with Daniel Bryan and Triple H being pedig- Triple H pedigreeing him. That's if you're calling that a downer, I don't know what the hell. What at about. WrestleMania where no, no, Daniel no, no. Bryan at SummerSlam? Oh, at SummerSlam. At yeah. SummerSlam, when Daniel Bryan was was that the last match of the card? Yes. Did it not set up for the greatest WrestleMania of all time? I'm sorry, the greatest Daniel Bryan. Yes, yes, yes. Did it not set that up? Because that is long-term booking done right. I'm not, I don't think they're going to do the long-term booking thing with this finish. I think what's going to happen is you're going to have Paul Heyman come out with Brock, and then they're going to have a little scuffle. They're going to be like, Paul Heyman's like, hey, I remember what you did last week. And Brock's like, you wouldn't be anywhere without me. And then Paul Heyman's going to be like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And Roman's probably bleeding in the corner. And then you're going to get your cash-in new Universal Champion. And there's a possibility that Heyman aligns with whoever cashes in. Ooh. That's my prediction. Now, if Heyman aligns himself with somebody new here, the three options would be Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman, and Kevin Owens. Yes. Who do you believe that Paul Heyman would do the best job with and why? I think Paul Heyman would do the best job with Kevin Owens because yeah. he's not... I don't want to say Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar are the same, but they're both big, huge guys. Brock and Lesnar's, with Brock Lesnar, we've well, seen Paul Heyman manage a big, huge guy. Like the yeah. big 300 pounders. Yeah. And we've like Brock got Lesnar circa 2004. Exactly. And I don't, I think Paul Heyman might want something different. And would, the most different out of all the three is Kevin Owens. He's, but Kevin Owens doesn't need it. None of these no. superstars need it. No. If you want to get Roman over, it might be worth a shot. But I think that Kevin Owens would be the best. Now, are you assuming, it, let's, uh, hypothetically, let's go with Brock Lesnar or uh, Paul Heyman going with Roman Reigns? Do you turn Paul Heyman face, in quotation marks, face? Or do you turn Roman Reigns legitimately heel? Honestly, that all depends on the t-shirt sales because it's either gonna, the t-shirt's either going to say, I'm a Paul Heyman guy or I'm a Roman Reigns guy. That's what well, the Paul t-shirt. Heyman coming out in a Roman Reigns, and I'm a Roman Reigns It's either Roman t-shirt. comes out in a shirt that says, I'm a Paul Heyman guy, or Paul Heyman comes out in a shirt that says, I'm a Roman Reigns guy. It's all about the merch. You got to follow the merch. Follow the merch. Following the merch straight into SmackDown Live on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock on the USA Network. Is it on the USA Network? I believe so. For now, until it's on Fox. That is correct. So... What was the clip? That I, I keep forgetting. I, I need to write stuff down here when I'm hosting this show. What was the clip that you were talking about me playing here? Well, I didn't know. I thought there was nothing really stand out promo wise or clip wise. Well, there was a Samoa Joe. That would Joe. be good for, good for radio. There was a Samoa Joe promo that was pretty cool. There was that was like really intense and showing off Samoa Joe. But there's also a Miz promo. And nobody cuts promos like the Miz. That is Should we call this why? a stainless whoa, 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 steel Whoa, 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 listen to me, listen to me, don't listen to that. All right, we're back inside the CKDJ studios. I'm Colin Scully. No, you're not. Anyways, there was, um, uh, I don't know why that ad played. I don't know who that ad was for. Hopefully you don't sue us, please. Anyways, so the promo that you were talking about was not an ad for a barbecue. It was the Miz's promo. So let's play this promo here. 
Miz taunted me. He baited me. He antagonized course, me. Again. All because he felt this protective Daniel Bryan. wall because I was not. Hey, I noticed something new about Daniel Bryan. I don't know if it's I've been a sleeper on SmackDown, but he changed he his yes shirts from red to blue. Taunt him and that he would be safe. Yeah, that's been since he's but been back. Then, I think. Oh, has it? He, I, I, I know I've seen him wearing some other colored clear. shirts. Yeah, that, that's back. That's back before he went away. Okay. Yeah. But ever since he's been back, he had that. And now that, that is a new shirt, though, because the shirt that he was wearing before. Down. The last so shirt that he was wearing, he I can't do? remember when. What but the last shirt that he was wearing was a to? gray one. He and brought yeah, and it had his face on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah, the yeah. ring. He brought what I thought was his very own baby strapped to his chest to the ring. So Why? Daniel Bryan admitted he was fooled to by a toy. To protect himself because he knows that if he and I were to ever get in a fair fight, I would destroy the Miz. I could probably agree with that. It, yeah. Easy. Not in a wrestling match. What kind of match? Regular If you match. think I'm wrong, Miz wins come by out counter. here and prove it. Yeah. Because I'm out here in the ring all by myself, and I would love nothing more than to punch you in the face right now. Not a knee to face. That's Shinsuke. Daniel. Daniel, up here, hi. I thought you would have known and learned from your time as SmackDown Live general manager that you're not in the indies anymore. Cool. This isn't a high school gym where you can call me out and I'll walk out there and we'll fight. No, I'm an elite talent. If you want to Miz fight me, you have to part of the your elite. way to fighting me. Oh. Just being on the set of your reality show or whatever it is that you're doing, all that shows is that you're hiding. And it proves what Miz I've doesn't said hide. He's a very busy man. Is that you're nothing that more than a coward. No, the same case. Do you remember the last time, time you called me a coward? We were on well, the set I mean, of Talking Smack. In terms of and busy, I got in your Brock face, Lesnar and what did you do? Did you fight Passing for your drug dreams? And Did you punch me in the face? Up Moose no, with his you own got up hands. and you walked away. Because as much as you pretend that you want to fight me, all you really want is this. This, Daniel. You just want me and you locked in conflict because you know it furthers your career. I have carried you. Ooh. Carried you on my back since I was a pro on NXT. Ten years. Of fighting on the indies, Daniel, to get noticed. And it took me five minutes of getting in your face on Talking Smack to make you famous. That's the difference between you and I. For me, this is about passion. And for you, this is about fame. And nobody will ever remember you as a great superstar because you are too soft. Mm, this but is getting heated. If you need a big stage, if you need something big to come out and fight, why don't you talk to your agent? Why don't you get off your set? And why don't you come fight me one-on-one -on -one at SummerSlam? You just do the same thing over and over again. This is, this is you. You create sympathy, you talk about your wife, you get beat, cry, repeat. I am done with you riding my coattails. When are you gonna accept reality, Daniel? That the Yes Movement is over. The WWE Universe has moved on. Why can't you uh, just let your contract expire? Oh, jabs at and Neville. Go entertain jobs at Daniel of Bryan. People in high school gyms. He still hasn't resigned. Because nope. These people, they don't care but that you're also a jab at Neville, at probably. Oh. 30. They, much like me, are annoyed with you. So why can't you just be quiet and go away? Because all these people, they look at you, and all they see is one thing. Yeah, and this is and this is where it got bad. Oh. Miz being the ultimate heel and making it annoying so that nobody could listen to this. Please cut this off. It only multiplies from here, folks. It's probably gonna peak like crazy, so I should. Rest in peace, headphones users. Yep. All right, so. Oh, Miz is back. Wah. 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 You know it. Come on and fight back. You like my little jab at Zack Ryder? Wah. Wah. 
Wow, you know it. They're actually, uh, him and his wife are expecting a baby as well. Chelsea Green? Yeah. Oh, congratulations to Zack Ryder and Chelsea Green. Yeah, Chelsea Green, who is currently an uh, WWE Performance Center trainee, I believe, actually. Oh, did she get a, she get a piece of paper from them? I don't know. Because I know she was like, she, I know she reported there once upon a time. I don't know if she's you know, still she's there. she's listed as a trainee. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, of course. Now, what would SmackDown Live be without Jeff Hardy and Shinsuke Nakamura? Oh, and the uh, the third man, Randy Orton. It's me, Austin. No, no, it's Randy Orton. <laughs> RKO. My tone of voice describes what I feel every time Randy Orton takes ten minutes to get to the ring. Right. So we don't really need to talk about that. Like, what we're going to talk about is the fact that. Uh, Randy Orton beat up Jeff Hardy again, except this time Shinsuke Nakamura also beat up Jeff Hardy without. All right. We are going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. This is CKDJ1079. You're listening to Wrestling With Ideas. Hey, everyone. This is CCO Kerkowalis, and you're listening to Wrestling With Ideas at CCO. Look out, folks. There's a hurricane coming through. Or in the case of Ottawa, there might be a tornado. We don't know. Welcome back inside the CKDJ studios. This is Wrestling With Ideas right here on CKDJ 107.9. As always, I'm the music man. Alongside me, the man with no excuses. Sorry for cutting that last segment short. We both got emergency alerts on our phones as we are recording this on Wednesday evening that there may be a tornado coming to Ottawa. Yep, so uh, we're going to... If you don't hear this tomorrow, you know why. Exactly. But they don't because they won't hear this. Wow. <laughs> Let's see you segue that into SmackDown Live. Well, someone's probably going to come in here. Gibby's probably going to come in here and put me through a table because of how crap that was. That's a real SmackDown right. right there. And another let's, SmackDown Let's thing. take a look at our notes. What's the next segment after next this? Next segment, well, it was actually the first segment. Okay. That we missed because we started talking straight about The Miz. Um, but uh, there was a rather interesting woman superstar that came back. Okay. All right. I'm going to make this now, work. We have to talk about the first promo that was cut, though. Ooh, whose promo is this? Carmella's promo? Becky Lynch. Becky or, no, Lynch it was is, Carmella. No, no. Becky Lynch was first, and then Carmella came right, back. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Becky Lynch addressing everybody. She's back. She's the last kicker. She's happy to be back in the title picture. She's on top of the SmackDown women's division. And at SummerSlam, she's going to take Carmella's arm off. New SmackDown Live women's champion. Becky's hyping herself up. And then we get a confusing promo from Carmella where she comes out and she acts like she's the face. And she's thanking Becky and saying, when I was in NXT, I always looked up to you. And I was never supposed to be more than a valet for Enzo and Cass. And I looked up to you, and here I am now, SmackDown Live Women's Champion. It would be an honor to face you at SummerSlam. That's what she said. She even teared up a little bit. Right. But then... James Ellsworth music hit. James Ellsworth. Not him. Just his music. Yep. And boom, blindside. Ha ha ha, Becky Lynch. I tricked you into... What? Charlotte Flair? He's still wrestling. No. Charlotte Flair, of course, still wrestling. And then Carmella, after after the attack from Charlotte Flair, or the saving of Becky Lynch. The the from Soul Carmella. Sisters or whatever you would call them, because two Becky halves Le two out of the four horsewomen. Yes, and also best friends. Well. Like real life best friends, unlike yeah. Sasha and Bailey. Right. Carmella and Becky, they always they I think they're road they travel on the road together. Yeah. That would be an interesting episode of Ride Along. You could have Carmella, Charlotte, and Becky. Yeah, Carmella would sit in the back, though. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, the Charlotte Flair comes out, and I have 
gets a little revenge for Becky, and then yeah. Paige, GM, general manager Paige, oh, Charlotte girl, I have a great idea, girl, baby girl, baby girl, you're going to have a match, baby girl. So Charlotte Flair, later on in the night, gets a match with Char- uh, Carmella. Carmella, and if Charlotte Flair wins, she is added to the Smack. Down women's championship match at SummerSlam to make it a triple threat, and that's exactly what happened. Now Becky Lynch was shown backstage as Carmella did win this, and <laughs> <laughs> Becky Lynch was not happy. She was. I am not happy. I do. Okay, dude. I've been saying for months how they need to put Becky on top of one of the women's divisions and give her a belt. Doesn't matter which one it is. Could be Raw. Could be SmackDown. She's definitely the top baby face in the company right now. Yes, Becky Lynch. That's a pretty big argue because, well, nobody's more clean-cut babyface than Johnny Gargano. Like, he is the babyface's babyface. He's the main roster. He's the biggest babyface on the But he's not on the main roster. On the main roster, it it goes all over the place. I'd say Becky. But I'd still say Becky. I'd put I'd, I'd definitely say, put Becky now, in a top now, spot. I will I will say this right now. If Becky can win this match with someone who with both of them, because they're both okay. Like well, I mean, Charlotte Flair is one of the Charlotte Flair is better than is better than uh, Carmella, but By Carmella, shot. but Carmella isn't a bottom of the barrel anymore. She's like I'd say maybe in the middle of as far as ability. Like she's she's learned stuff and she's still got room to learn. She does. Yeah. So I was saying, um, if Becky can beat both of these women here and become the SmackDown Women's Champion, that oh, yeah. is gonna get her like. That is I don't know. I don't know how it's. If. I don't know how it's possible to be more over than Becky Lynch is already. But yeah. if if she can beat Charlotte Flair and Carmella, the the hate it will is get there. her so much more over. The hate is there. The hate for uh, Carmella, I should say, is there. The love for Becky is there. Well, I mean, everyone except for the Northern Irish, but that's a different story for. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, the hate for for uh, Carmella's there, and the love for Becky's there on SmackDown every week. And uh, Char- Charlotte Flair's liked she, but I don't think she's as liked as Becky Lynch is right now. Oh, easy. I think the only reason that Charlotte Flair got as much of a pop as she did is because she hasn't been seen on TV. I yeah, she's she's kind of been on and off, mostly off. Well, because she's been heard. Yeah, like she's been on and off, but mostly off. Like she's been in promos and she's been backstage, but we haven't seen her wrestle or take take a bump here and there. Right. All right, I know that that was a bit of a short segment, but before we go into our last segment, we do have to take one more commercial break. You're listening to CKDJ 107.9, Ottawa's new music. Music. American males, American males, American males, American males. Daddy! I love my the stuff and the girls Daddy. just can't get it done. This is Buck Bagwell, and you're listening to Wrestling With Ideas. <laughs> Welcome back inside the CKDJ Studios, right here for Wrestling With Ideas. CKDJ 107.9 Ottawa's new music. That's going to wrap things up for myself, the music man, Colin Scully, as well as the man with no excuses, Jonathan Skews. Now, just before we go, there have been rumors that have been climbing and climbing in terms of my favorite indie darling is now, coming climbing and climbing. The rumors are almost getting higher. Higher? Is that a 420 reference, pal? I think so. Because Matt Riddle has been seen. He's signed. He's coming. Brooklyn takeover. Matt Riddle is coming to NXT, and I'm excited. I'm all Alex Jonesy in here. I'm pounding my fist. Uh, my voice is raised. My heartbeat's going up. Matt Riddle's home, boys. I'm excited. Like, bro. And that's not a Vince Russo, bro. <laughs> that's not a Zack Ryder, bro. That is a Matt Riddle, bro. He is coming. 4 0 in UFC until they kicked him out for being RVD. Indie darling. Broplexes. Look at his hat. If you haven't seen a Matt Riddle match, I highly suggest you look up Matt Riddle versus Keith Lee. It was a yeah, great match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anything with Keith Lee, you know you're Even at match. that subpar Joey Janela spring break, Matt Riddle versus James Ellsworth was my favorite match on that 
There was a, there was a, uh, I think it was the pre-match promos that they had shown where Matt Riddle was seen saying, I have to face James Ellsworth. Are you effing kidding me, bro? <laughs> bro. But bro. yes, Matt Riddle. Oh, I, let's I, play a drinking game here on Wrestling With Ideas. Every time Matt Riddle says bro. <laughs> and also, as being the crazy Matt Riddle fan that I am, I've conspiracy theoried a whole bunch of possibilities for him. I'm thinking that one of the things we're going to see is him being wasted on the main roster. But wait, 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 wait a second. What do you mean by wasted? Oh, I think after he's done in NXT and gets up to WWE, he's probably going to be mishandled, which is the sad truth with most indie darlings when they come to WWE. Right. Is there's now, a good chance they will be mishandled. Now, given the given the uh, context of our previous conversation, I thought you meant that he was actually going to run a weed gimmick. No, oh, they they could, but if, if that's they, like if, if Vince was still in charge and it was the Attitude Era that he would well, be or or if Vince was still in charge because once Triple H takes over, who oh, they? he's going to be a little bit more subtle. But yeah. what I'm thinking is that if WWE is going to waste Matt Riddle, what they're going to do is they're going to put him in a tag team with Zack Ryder because right. Zack Ryder's woo 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 bro, and Matt Riddle is bro and the broplex and that, then you bring Vince Russo back to manage that them. they'd have a they have a TV no what you do is you get the <laughs> bromans from TNA oh god <laughs> no they'd have a little broy tag team kind of like the well hype I mean bros. Robbie E was rumored to be uh, WWE Performance Center yeah he was going down yeah so like I think they might get a little bro gimmick but I think best case scenario and this is my true heart's desire for WWE to book Matt Riddle is to just book him as the skinny Brock Lesnar He's been to UFC. He suplex cities. He's like, I'd love to see him be dominant on the roster. I don't mind seeing him take a couple losses here and there because it's 50 50 booking, pal. That's how it works. But Matt Riddle, skinny Lesnar, suplex everybody, give him a mid card title. I want to see him as North American Championship in NXT. I don't know if that's right. the only belt that he's ever going to hold, but I'd love to see him right off the bat. Not necessarily with Adam Cole, but a Matt Riddle, Matt Riddle, Adam Cole match isn't terrible. Rematch. I think I think that's happened before too. Probably a, like an evolve card earlier. Matt Riddle versus Adam Cole. That sounds like it's happened. Yes. Has it actually happened? Now I have to check this out here. I don't know. I need someone to stall because I'm got a list that I sent to I people. I am. I am going to be stalling. I am going to be. I'll take this time to explain a little bit more what's going on. Podbean have decided to charge me for things that I haven't had running for a couple months now. Of course, this being the Parts Unknown WrestleCast, but I will also take this time to announce that the Parts Unknown WrestleCast, as this is a new month, it's going to be a new me, I'm going to be trying some new stuff here, the Parts Unknown WrestleCast will be making its return to wrestling. It's going to be taken under the Wrestling With Ideas umbrella and everything. I'm going to be talking sort of more the interesting and unknown side of wrestling, of course, this being some more interesting matches, sort of building off of our Doctor's Orders as well. Now, Doctor's Orders for the rest that we have recorded are going to be uploaded on the Wrestling With Ideas feed. Once I get that sorted out, you will you can stay tuned to the Twitter at Wrestling Cap Capital W Ideas. John, is that enough stalling for that you? That is stalled enough. I'm going to tell you something right now, Scully. When I first heard that Matt Riddle was coming to WWE and starting out in NXT, the first thing I did is I wrote down 10 opponents I want to see him face. All right. And then we're going to do it in a bracket. And you're going to tell me which one you want to see the most and who wins. All right. Matt Riddle versus AJ Styles. Matt Riddle versus Brock Lesnar. Matt Riddle versus Adam Cole. Matt Riddle versus Dean Ambrose. Matt Riddle versus The Miz. Matt Riddle versus Velveteen Dream. Ooh. Matt Riddle versus Kevin Owens, Matt Riddle versus EC3, Matt Riddle versus Zack Ryder, no. and as the big ha ha, Z Matt Riddle versus Rob Van Dam. No, they would never do it, but th I had to get that joke in yeah, there somehow. I figured ten opponents for Matt Riddle. Which match is your favorite? Any Matt of Riddle the match. NXT guys? So you, so Adam any of Cole, the NXT guys? Adam Cole, Adam Cole, Velveteen Dream, or uh, EC3? EC3. Absolutely. I'd probably say. Velveteen Dream would Velveteen, be a good story. That would be an interesting one. It would one. be a great story. It would be kind of like what he did with uh, Ricochet and yeah. Lars Sullivan, where with Lars Sullivan, he's trying to get him to say his name, or was that somebody else? Sounds right. No, it was Aleister Black. Right. So he, w he wants Matt Riddle to acknowledge him because he knows Matt Riddle is this big, went 4-0 in UFC, indie darling, big on the indie scene. Or you could have him be all like, this is my show. 
I'm Velveteen Dream. People tune into NXT to see me, and Matt will be like, I don't know, bro. Are you kidding me, bro? I think they tune in to see this and suplex his Velveteen Dream and you get it. Now, a when Matt Riddle comes to WWE, do you think he loses his suplex apparel sponsorship? I don't know. Uh, remains- it all depends on how in the company Lesnar is, really. Yeah. That remains to be seen, and a lot of things remain to be seen. And you can tune in next week to Wrestling With Ideas. It's going to be the, I believe, is it going to be the go-home, or is there going to be one more episode before? I think it's two, three weeks before SummerSlam. Two, three weeks before SummerSlam. Okay, so we're, gonna, we're still going to have another couple episodes before SummerSlam, but we will take this time before we go to announce the beginning of not just the Parts Unknown WrestleCast under Wrestling With Ideas. There's going to be a third show, or a fourth show, I guess. A third is. and a half show. Sure, sort of, but not really. Anyways, um, recently, you may have heard uh, the... Old School, Wrestling with Old School Ideas, episode 2.5, which started off as a review of King of the Ring 1993 with myself, Jonathan, and Mean Street Rossi, or the La Parca Marca, Marco Rossi. Um, But then it ended up being that we decided that we all have a passion for fantasy booking. And so we decided, why not? What the hell? Let's start a show called Hit in the Books with Rossi, Skuse, and Scully. So, yeah, it's basically going to be an hour of fantasy booking every week that we can get all three of us in at the it's same time. gonna vary from the simple to the insane that's all i can tell you right right before we've even started it's gonna be either it's gonna start off really simple and it's just gonna go crazy from there so i hope you like insane booking well i mean heath slater is universal champ i'll book it sure all right thank you guys for listening to wrestling with ideas and as always have a good one